How many times have you asked yourself, what am I doing with my life? Can I do something different to be happier? Does something need to change? We were questioning how we're spending most of our time living this one life that we got given. And then Luke asked me this very important question that changed everything. If you die tomorrow, are you happy with today? And my answer was no. <laughs> hey. We were very busy working in our own food truck, our own business. And even though it was successful, it was not rewarding. No, business was good, money was coming in, but our happiness and, and definitely my mental health went way down there. Yeah. So we definitely had to do something to change all that. So six years ago, we sold everything we owned in search of our adventure with an end goal. Living out our dream, this off-grid life in nature with animals. But we have learned a lot these last five years. So here's seven things we learned living off-grid for the past five years, which hopefully will help you if you decide to do the same. Yeah, what he said. Number one, be patient, young Jedi. <laughs> This life definitely teaches you to be patient. You have no other choice, really. Um, in the beginning, when you first move onto your off-grid land, you're like super excited to try out everything you've researched and all different technologies and gardening. You want to grow this, that, the other. You want to do it all. But you have to be patient and do things one by one, really, if you want to do them properly. Everything takes longer than you thought. Other things crop up. Everything costs more than you think it's going to cost so your budget might not allow you to continue a certain project so yeah being patient is super super important otherwise your mental health is uh, gonna get to you starting this off a good life you have to learn everything from scratch unless you've had previous experience so you have to become a plumber an electrician a gardener a all-round handyman and if you have animals you have to kind of become a vet assistant so, yeah. yeah, you do have to be patient to learn all these things. You will learn them. But learning takes but, time. Yeah, it takes time. <laughs> and patience is needed. <laughs> Number two. Live within your means. When you're living off grid, most probably your power's coming from solar. So you do have to adjust your power consumption from what you're used to, to something a bit lower. The first rule of going solar is use less power. And take into consideration the weather. The second of living within your means is water. Now everyone is going to be different. Everyone has a different amount of water on their land. You can have one well, you can have 10 wells. We've got two, but we've got other water supplies too, but we do not use them yet. So we have learned how to use less water, number one, for everything, but also cut down on certain things that we were doing for nothing. Like the first year we had gardens all over the place and we're using a lot of water. So now it's more confined and we can handle this amount of water for the well that we have. Yeah, learning your limits of what water you actually have is really important because you don't want to run out midway through summer or something. Um, so yeah. We definitely had to condense our gardens and concentrate a lot more on water retention in the soil than just adding more water and it go dis dissipating. Yeah. And another thing about living within your means on this road to self-sufficiency, you may think, oh, I'll get chickens and I'll get goats and I'll get milk and I'll get cheese and eggs and I'll save so much money. But I think there's a, a certain threshold where if you're small like us, like we still are, I mean, we have 12 chickens and four, well, two female milking goats and two kids at the moment. Um, yeah, it's more expensive for the food and the vet visits and all this stuff than if we had to actually buy, buy eggs the amount eggs. of eggs yeah. and milk and cheese that we actually eat. You know what I mean? So I'm sure there's a, a threshold where you come to a point if you start selling milk or cheese then it becomes worth it or if like you do like we hope to do maybe we start this year is to grow all the grain that we give to the yeah. animals so at least we're growing it ourselves yeah because in the beginning like we've had chickens and we had months where we had to buy our own eggs and we're still feeding our chickens because either they're all broody or it's too hot to lay eggs so there's that as well and you're yeah. still feeding them while they're not giving you anything as well yeah Except love. 
<laughs> yeah. You also have to live within your means when it comes to tools. Everyone always says, buy the best quality, buy them once and they'll last forever. But when you start out, you'll find out that you need so many things that you can't afford the best of everything. So sometimes you have to make allowances. I mean, if you need a drill, if you don't have one, you need one then and there, and you only have 20 bucks to spare, you're gonna have to buy a cheap one until you can afford a better one. Number three, time management. And I'm going to start with the animals. If you don't have animals, then it probably doesn't mean it, it's not going to do anything for you. But when we first got animals, we weren't totally prepared and they take up a lot of your time. So if you don't have things in place to keep them busy all day and you have to kind of babysit them, it takes up a lot of your time and you need your time to do a lot of work around your awesome piece of land. Yeah, you'd think being on your land 24-7 that you're going to have loads of time to do everything, but it's really not the case. You really have to manage your time well. <laughs> so who doesn't want to grow their own food? And in the beginning we just wanted to grow everything. And then we realised, hold on, I've just grown 60 parsnips and I don't like parsnips. I just grew them for the hell of it. Now they don't go to waste because we can give them things to the animals and everything, but you really have to be careful on what you grow and what you actually preserve. Preserving food, drying it or um, pickling, or canning. canning, whatever you do, it really takes up a lot of time. And if the end, the whole year has gone by and you haven't eaten a bunch of, in our case, canned quinces, if you haven't eaten all your quinces from the year before like us, don't preserve a whole other batch because you're gonna have way too much. Number four, climb your mountain one step at a time. So doing so many things out of one's comfort zone, sometimes you might feel really stressed and overwhelmed. It definitely happens to me. I mean, building this outdoor kitchen that we're building at the moment, even while I was doing the footings and everything, I was really feeling overwhelmed and that I, I'm not qualified to do this. But I just concentrate. I like to concentrate on the menial, small task at hand like really break it down to the smallest possible part and then just do the next one and do the next one and before you know it you've got a huge job done so that's my advice anyway of how to overcome being overwhelmed when you're outside of your comfort zone because you're doing so many things that you've never done before bless you number five live for today do not stress yourself out with unrealistic deadlines life isn't meant to be hurried don't forget why you chose this life in the first place we decided to get animals almost straight away and had we waited it probably would have been a lot easier for us but since our motto is live for today and enjoy every day we decided because i wanted animals more than anything in my life we decided to fill ourselves with animals <laughs> Number six, living by the seasons and the weather. In the last five years, we've definitely had to adapt and try and find a rhythm with the seasons. First few years, we we're always chasing the seasons. Now we're getting a bit of a better understanding. Here in Portugal, we deal with the extreme heat. Now we are from a hot country, but we never used to work outdoors back then. So now we know what it's like to work outside in the heat and sometimes it is impossible. Yeah, July and August, especially where we are in central Portugal, you can't do anything beyond 10.30 in the morning till about half seven, even 8 p.m. So it's quite frustrating, especially in the beginning when you've got loads to do, you know, you know you've got loads to do and yet you have to sit under a tree and do nothing. Well, not nothing. You can plan things. Oh, you can work on your no, YouTube you can work videos. On these videos yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, you lose a lot of time. But then that gives you the motivation for when you've got long days like spring, where it's 28 degrees and you can work from early in the morning to late at night. It gives you the motivation to go hard and make up yeah. 
for all the lost time in summer. It sure does. Also over here in Portugal we have a lot of forest fires so we do have to prepare ourselves for summer because we can't use certain tools, we can't use heavy machinery, we can't use like the strimmer, the, the chainsaw. So you have to keep that in mind when you're planning the work that you want to do on your land. Yeah. Obviously depending where you are in the world you might have other natural disasters that affect your life so so yeah um, if you're on the beach you have to prepare for a tsunami I don't know. <laughs> Number seven be ready to fail except that sometimes things will be out of your control and things will break and animals will get sick. Yeah, don't be afraid to fail. I mean, you're learning so many new things. You're bound, to, you can't succeed in every single thing you do. And when you fail, if you accept that you failed and you've made a mistake, you'll learn from it and hopefully improve. Talking about failing, right now I'm sitting in what would have been our uh, bathroom for what we were gonna call our tent palace. Instead of the earth here, we used to have a big bell tent, seven meter diameter and then we had the back tent for this bathroom that I was building and in the front we had like a little kitchen and uh, entryway um, but in the middle of the night in November we had a huge storm the tent split right down the middle in the middle of the night rain coming in on all our furniture and everything total disaster and then we bought this yurt which is now pretty much a storage room to be honest Apart from the tent splitting down the middle, we also found out that winter that the drainage from all these terraces over here passed right through our future bathroom. So not the best of planning. So yeah, be ready to fail. That's how you learn. Own your mistakes. Well, that's our seven things we learned after five years living off grid here in central Portugal. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe took something away from those seven things. Yeah, and we also have some really exciting news. That's why our caravan has had a little bit of a makeover. We showed you a tiny bit, but we'll be doing a caravan, a caravan tour very soon. But the exciting news I already shared with our patrons on Patreon. So if you want to find out more and you want to help us out by supporting our channel and our farm and our animals, you can head on to Patreon and we'll see you on the inside. And talking about Patreon, we'd like to thank our newest patron, Grumpy T. Thanks for joining our Patreon pack. Yeah, and also thank you, Miss P and JJC, for your super thanks. Thank you so very much. We appreciate, we appreciate it. it. So thank you guys for watching and have an awesome week ahead. Bye, guys. Bye. If you die today, no. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. Number seven. Oh. <laughs> pew, pew, pew.